host today. I hope you're having a great day so far. We have a great program for you today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman. Tom McGuff will be uh, by in just a minute. Sydney, we have a great guest today with a great subject. We do. We have two great guests on our program today. So in a little bit, you're going to hear Tom McGuff. He has a conversation with Pastor Frank Rondon from our Faith and Family channel. And I have a question for you. What can we expect in the days ahead? You know, today we're going to take a look at the end times with Pastor Pierre Rosa, and he's going to unpack God's plans for through humanity, through the book of Revelation. I know, Tom, this can be a tough one for a lot of us as Christians to digest, but it's so important that we have an, on, an understanding of what God is saying in his word. Well, I mean, God put the book of Revelation in, in the Bible for a reason, yeah. right? It's for us to read, it's for us to understand, it's for us to, uh, to know what's going on. In fact, we have a scripture today, Sydney. I, 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 I think this is a great scripture to start the program off with. It's Revelation 1, 3, and it says this. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. So the, now when that was 2000 years ago when that was written and he says the time is near, but the time is near and we have to be the ones who understand. I don't think we're ever going to understand completely, but we have to have our eyes open, our antennas up to what God's doing. I like Tom how he said we have to have our eyes open and our antennas up to what God is doing. And I know the first time I actually read the book of Revelation, I was 12, 13 years old in my Bible, just going through and it just, I was just like, whoa, there's a lot of things to unpack here, but there's so much good truth in there. And the one of my favorite passages all in Revelation was I love where it says every nation, every tribe and every tongue will be Amen. together like worshiping God. And that's for me, I'm like, that's, I stand on that. I'm like, I just want to see that in our everyday lives unfold here now. But I also know like in the days to come in the end times, that's so important that that's a promise that we have. So it's really important for us to understand the book of Revelation. I'll be honest, I'm like, whoo, today going into this subject, I want to learn and understand because I yeah. think it can be a little frightening. I mean, some of the things you read about plagues and, you know, the angels coming and well, all of that. Well, I grew up in scary. the 70s and I always say, I, I heard a lot about the tribulation <laughs> in the 70s and yeah. what we were going to have to go through, you know, and it's interesting that, you know, God still has his timetable. He still has his plans and purposes. And his plan and purpose today is that you would understand what he's doing in the world. And if you need prayer today, if you if you come to this uh, program and you say, well, I'm glad about the end times, but what about today? Well, if you need prayer, we have our prayer partners standing by and they're there. They're there 24 seven to pray with you and to take, you know, your request to the Lord. Yes. Yes. And so now let's head over to Tom McGuff, who's with Pastor Frank Rondon from our Faith and Family Channel. Well, thank you so much, Sydney. And we are blessed on the Faith and Family Channel to have just so many dynamic local ministries and, and a dear, dear brother in the Lord. And one of those dynamic ministries is Iglesia Cristiana Sion here in Pittsburgh, a, a wonderful outreach to the Hispanic community. And it is my privilege to introduce a dear brother in the Lord, Frank Rondon. Frank, welcome to, to Hope Today. And, and thank you so very much. And Frank, I, Every time that I, I watch your program, every time I just see and I feel the anointing of God's Holy Spirit on your life, it gives it a context when I realize, though, that you didn't always realize the calling that you had on ministry. It is amazing, Tom, because God doesn't let any of our experiences go to waste. That's right. And many times we minister to others out of that which we have been through. And I remember yes. the very day when I felt so far away from God. Mm. And I felt like life really was, it had no meaning. But that is exactly how you feel when you feel, when you are far away from God. That's right. But the closer you get to Him, the more you see, the better you hear, and the more direction you get. And so, me, while I began to take steps towards God, I realized that for every one step I took towards Him, He took 10 towards me. Mm. And He embraced me, He loved me, He gave me meaning, direction, purpose, and that's where we are today. We're imparting that which we have been given. That which we, so you know, we, we say sometimes that um, you, you teach what you know, but you impart who you are. Mm. So this is a season of impartation. And we impart who we are because God has made us who we are today. The world and the circumstances of 20 months of this, this worldwide pandemic has really disoriented the world, I believe. 
And, and I believe even people who had been stable coming into the pandemic, uh, we've become confused as, as a whole, as a people, we've become confused. What, what do we have to look for? What would you say to somebody that, that is just confounded by life and its circumstances about how clarity begins with acknowledging God for who He is? I believe that everything that has happened nowadays means one thing, that we are so ever much more closer to the return of Jesus Christ. That's right. And so God is purifying His church. He's sifting us, mm. and He is giving us an opportunity to make a stand for Him. And so what is going to keep us today standing is our intimacy with Him, our closeness to Him. So because it's going to come a point where we're going to have nowhere else to go but God. See, for so long, we have had so many choices right. for provision, for protection, for even uh, comfort. Mm -hmm. But there is going to come a day when, uh, and that is going to be a wonderful day because we will look to Jesus for every one of our needs. Mm, praise God. I have been almost haunted by Paul's challenge to the first century church when he says, and he says this to the church in Rome, he says that um, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, but how can they call upon him when they don't believe? How can they believe if they've never heard? And how will they hear if you and I don't tell them? God has blessed you with a passion to tell someone about Jesus Christ. How significant is that for other believers to receive that call, to receive this challenge, and to, to do everything that we can to tell someone about Jesus. Th that is the, the call that we have. It is not just for pastors, it is for everyone. Yes. Because, see, the Bible says that we have been all been made kings and priests by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. So everyone who has received Jesus has a calling. And that's the calling to proclaim the gospel, to tell others about the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is that there is a king coming and he's inviting me to be a part of his kingdom, Praise to be God. a part of, to, 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 to rule with him in this earth. And so everybody needs the opportunity to hear and make a decision that's whether right. you want to accept the invitation or not accept the invitation, but everybody has to hear. My brother, I think of myself as one beggar telling another beggar where I found food. And I want to give you that opportunity. I want you to look into the camera and I want you to just uh, challenge and, and to give that blessing, give that invitation to someone that would be watching this program today. Today, you are watching this program and it is not a coincidence. Jesus Christ loves you. He gave his son for you and he is wanting to have a relationship with you to make you into everything He created you to be. He wants you to be close to Him. He wants you to feel loved, accepted, embraced. And it all begins with a prayer. It all begins with faith. It all begins by hearing the Word of God. So today, if you feel far away from God, like I felt at one point in my life, I was at my lo lowest point in my life, but that is where God met me and He picked me up. And I just looked up. So today is your day to look up to heaven and say to Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Infuse me with life. Forgive my sins. Write my name in your book of life. If you say that today, you will be saved. Praise God. Fra Pastor Frank Rondon from Iglesia Christiana uh, Sion. And you can see Frank, this wonderfully dynamic ministry, along with all of the other local ministries on the Faith and Family Channel, Comcast 1185, Verizon 472. Thank you, my brother. And just thank you for the boldness and the audacity with which you tell that truth. Praise God. Thank you. And now, Sydney, we go back to you. Thanks, Tom. And we come back in 60 seconds. We're going to break down Revelation with Pierre Rosa. We'll be right back. During this month of Thanksgiving, we want to say a special thank you for your faithful prayers and giving. We're excited to offer you this beautiful gratitude journal with your best gift to Cornerstone Television. With inspirational and thought-provoking prompts and scripture quotes, this guided journal will help you in your discovery of finding peace for anxious moments, 
joy in life's blessings, confidence to face every moment, and strength to persevere in hardship. This journal also makes an excellent gift. Its soft touch matte lamination gives a silky smooth texture to the hard cover. High quality binding allows pages to lay flat when open, and a beautiful satin ribbon conveniently keeps your place. Request this special journal when you give your best gift. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. You know, the state of our world has many Christians, many people on alert wondering what's next. Well, our next guest, Pierre Rosa, breaks down God's redemptive strategy for the world in his book, The Book of Revelation, Unveiling God's Plan for Humanity. Pierre, thank you so much for joining us on Hope Today. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. You know, Pierre, before we break down into the book of Revelation, because I know so many people have questions, there's so much in there, there's so much substance that God wants to speak and reveal to us. I just want to hear a little bit about your story. You know, you pastor a church in Oregon, but you're from Brazil. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I was born and raised in uh, Brazil, moved to the United States when I was 19 years old to pursue uh, a calling for ministry. I became a Christian at the age of 15 down there in, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. But when I moved to California, that's when God called me to, uh, to the ministry. And then I wanted to pursue that call and went to seminary, worked for 10 years in a big church down there in California as an associate pastor. But now, four years ago, God called me here to Salem, Oregon. And I've been, been pastoring uh, Grace Baptist Church here ever since. That's awesome how God is just like having you in a call of ministry and just spreading his word. And I just want to ask you, Pierre, you know, a lot of people are wondering about, okay, why do we need to understand the book of Revelation? Why was it that God to really speak in your heart that this is a now word that people need to understand now more than ever, why Revelation is necessary to understand and to, to unpack? Yeah, it's because we need hope. And the book of Revelation promises that hope. And it says the, the verse we just read in the beginning of the program here, blessed are those who hear but blessed are those who read the words and practice what's written in it. So it's a book that promises a blessing both in the beginning and at the end. So uh, if, you, if you really want to hope, the book of Revelation is the book to go to. Obviously the entire Bible, but the book of Revelation unveils what God has in mind and how this whole thing is going to end. So I recommend it to everyone. Well, Pierre, I've been around for a long time. I've heard a lot of preaching, and I don't hear a lot on the book of Revelation. Sometimes people will go mm -hmm. through the whole Bible, but they don't really preach on the book of Revelation a whole lot. Why is that, and why do you think that needs to change? Well, it's because it's apocalyptic language, Tom, and there's a lot of bizarre imagery, a lot of strange scenes, it's, uh, strange creatures, and uh, so he gets scared. But the good news is that because the book promises blessing for those who read diligently and study diligently, it's a great opportunity to learn God's plan for, for the future through the creative, uh, the, the, the creative language of uh, bizarre imagery that God uses. So if you take the book at face value uh, and you read it over and over again, the Holy Spirit will open up um, the doors of heaven really so that you can understand God's plan for your life. A great thing to go through the book. So, Pierre, let's unpack a little bit. What is God's plan for the future? What are some things in Revelation that we need to be aware of? Is there even things that are happening right now that are unfolding in front of our eyes? You know, with everything with COVID and the pandemic, and there's so many shaking and rumblings happening right now on the earth. What can we say that we can see it's happening right now from the book of Revelation? Yeah, so obviously God is um, preparing us for what's ha what happens next. And what happens next is the rapture of the church. When uh, you and I, and every with, along with every believer, will be caught up in heaven to be together with Christ and will be transformed in a twinkling of an eye. And I think um, what we're seeing today, especially in the last 20 months or so with COVID, you know, COVID is a pestilence. The Bible talks about that in the end times. There will be some of that. There will be gov government overreach more, more than ever before in the, in the end times. Uh, so what we're seeing now, I really believe that God is calling us uh, to pay attention, uh, to, to get right with him. Now is the time. The day of salvation is today to come to Jesus Christ because the time is near. We just read it in the opening uh, verse there. Uh, the, the time is near, which means we're, we're nearer than ever. Uh, to, to meeting Jesus face to face. So th there's an urgency 
in understanding what God has in mind uh, for humanity. And what well, we know from the rest of the Bible that he wants people to be saved. He wants us to go and proclaim the message of salvation like we just heard from our brother there from Venezuela. Peter, let me ask you about one particular subject because I had mentioned in the open opening segment that I, you know, when I grew up, we, there was a lot of apocalyptic uh, literature and things that were, were coming out. And a lot of them had to do with the tribulation and persecution. So could you talk about persecution? I know that some of our brethren in the world right now in Afghanistan or other areas, communist nations, various places are experiencing incredible persecution right now. We need to keep them in prayer. But how do you see that kind of thing coming to the U.S.? Yeah, Tom, it's interesting because as Americans, we've had uh, freedom for the last 200 years freedom of religion and so we we tend to take it for granted uh, but the norm in church history is persecution uh, from the beginning even from the time of rome where believers would be persecuted for their faith and like you said some of our brothers and sisters around the world experience you know severe persecution uh, we, we don't experience persecution the way they do around the world uh, maybe maybe a little bit of that through the suppressing of free speech here and the uh, trying to silence believers. Maybe, maybe it's the beginning of that. But what we know is from the book of Revelation is that during the end times, there will be persecution like never before. Even the ones in the beginning under Nero, it'll be even more severe than that. So maybe what we're seeing now, and I can't say that for sure, it's again, the, 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 the previews of that with suppressing speech and canceling Christians who speak the truth and all of that. Maybe it's the beginning of all of that. I'm, we're not sure. You know, Pierre, just hearing about like the persecution, I know like I'm young, I'm like I'm 33 years old and sometimes hearing these things, I know it's like a fact that it's a truth and we begin to see these things, these birth pangs are happening, but it's very scary to just think about, you know, these things unraveling and these things unfolding. And something that you said in your book that like stood out to me, you said, you said suffering and rejection should be a normal part of our lives. So if it's supposed to be a normal part of our lives, how do we as Christians prepare for that? What should we be doing now? What does that look like so that we're not caught off guard when these things are happening? Yeah, good question, because uh, Peter, for example, wrote to the, uh, to the believers in Asia Minor in his book, says, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeals that come upon you. So a uh, good thing for us is to not be surprised when persecution comes our way. We should expect it. Um, and so when, when, when we expect persecution, then we, we know it's coming, and we, we know how to pray. We say, Lord, please take me through this. Maybe... We want God to take us out of persecution, but when really our prayer should be, take me through this. What do you want to teach me through all of this? And, you know, if you've been a believer for for some time now, we, all of us have gone through uh, some, some type of suffering, uh, you know, different degrees of suffering, because that's just part of life in a fallen world. And God uses those as tools to uh, cause us to be more like Christ. So we should welcome uh, suffering and persecution when they come, although we don't like it, but we should welcome them. Pierre, I just want to take that one step further. We, we know the, the pestilence and we know about how prophetic this is. And of course, now 20 months into a worldwide pandemic. But, but how, does, how does God equip the believer that we can not just survive, but actually thrive under these extreme conditions? Yeah, my experience, Tom, has been that uh, in my church, at least, we've had um, more opportunities to minister than ever because people are naturally afraid. Uh, they're, they're afraid for their lives. They're, uh, they, they fear death. And it was our opportunity to say, you know, we should, for us to live as Christ, to die as gain. If, if God has in his sovereign plan for you to get COVID, you will get COVID. I mean, do everything you can to prevent it, of course. But God in his uh, sovereign plan, if he decides that it's time, uh, let's see how what he wants to teach us um, uh, from from this. And uh, we've we've led people to Christ here in Salem. We're we're in the least churched part of the country, and we've had opportunities to lead people to Christ during this time and comfort the believers. There was a lot of fear and anxiety, even to the to this day. People are anxious about well, what's the government up to with these vaccine mandates and all of that? Should I take? Is this the mark of the beast? Should I do this? Should I not do that? So an opportunity to clarify. Uh, biblical knowledge and lead them uh, to a life of, of, of peace uh, and joy, even in the midst of pestilence and uncertainty. So it's, it's been 
a great 20 months, even though I myself had COVID, COVID a few uh, months ago, but what a, what a great time to, to be in ministry and to, to be a Christian. Yes, praise God. Yeah, Pierre, I, I, I know from, uh, I haven't visited the Northwest, but from what I understand, in many ways, it's a Christian desert up in your part of the country, you know, in terms of people, uh, yeah. it's really an unchurched part of our, of our society. And it's great that you've been able to witness and testify there. What does that look like in the end times, do you think? A, a faithful witness. You know, we, we've gone through the whole 20 years ago, the seeker friendly movement and, and, and kind of that's even sort of been uh, repented of by the people that were promoting it. They felt like it didn't really achieve what they had hoped to, to see. What do you think a faithful and true witness looks like as we approach the end times? A faithful wit witness is someone who uh, articulates the gospel, someone who tells people how to be saved. You know, a, a witness, by definition, needs to speak. So, yeah, we've all heard about the, the, the seeker-friendly movement like you were talking about, or the I'm going to live a good life and hope that people will, will like my Jesus because of the way I live. But I think that misses the point a little bit because what we need to do is we need to speak. When Jesus says, you will be my witnesses, uh, a witness by necessity needs to, to needs to articulate what has happened to him or her. So when we tell people, listen, um, I, I this is what Jesus has done for me, and this is what He can do to you if you just come to faith in Him. And the time to do that is is, is urgent because again, we don't know what's going to happen. The, the rapture of the church could happen a hundred years from now. It could happen today, uh, perhaps today. What, how glorious would that be? We'll be raptured in the middle of this interview. I wouldn't mind going this way. <laughs> but, Praise uh, the Lord. <laughs> yeah, amen. You know, just as you're talking, Pierre, I just think there's a lot. I just think about my generation and Generation Z. There's a lot of skepticism when there comes to the church. And I know in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the seven different churches and you talk about the loveless church, there's so many things that we have to be aware of and just know so we don't get trapped into these things. Because what would you say about, I mean, even the book of Revelation just talks about like a different gospels that are just rising up and trying to distract people from really knowing the true Jesus. Yeah, so chapters 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation address the churches, the church in general. Those seven churches represent every church uh, throughout church history and the problems that we encounter in churches. And a good thing to do is to go through those two chapters and understand what Jesus says about each one of those churches and take what he likes and take what he doesn't like, and we adjust our churches uh, accordingly really not rocket science. It's just a matter of understanding what is it that he expects from his church from those two chapters in the book of Revelation. He's very clear. You mentioned the loveless church. You know, obviously what God expects from us is to return to the first love. He doesn't want us to uh, lose our first love like the church in Ephesus. And every church that gets enamored with the world and starts embracing the things of the world and compromising is a church that is now departing from the first love. So we need, we need to go back to the first love uh, and, and love God more than we love the world. And, and um, the way to do that is by understanding the book, understanding what Christ expects from his church through those two chapters. I love that so much, Pierre. We need to go back to our first love, and that is Jesus, and just being laid down lovers of him, surrendering our all to him, because it is nothing like knowing him and having that peace. Thank you so much, Pierre, for just showing your, sharing your wisdom with the book of Revelation. His book is called The Book of Revelation, Unveiling God's Plan for Humanity. We'll have a link on our website at ctbn.org to get the book. Thank you so much for joining us, Pierre. Thank you all. God bless. You know, Tom and Tom, I just, that whole thing, I, you know, when we hear about the book of Revelation, and I'm not going to lie, sometimes I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus, there is a lot in this book. And I think yeah. everything that we've gone through, but the one thing just, God just keeps bringing me back over and over again, especially with the pandemic, if it's over, whatever state that we're in, is don't forget about what he did with us when we were in the pandemic. Don't forget about those moments when we surrendered to him and we spoke to him and we made room and made time for him. It is so important because we don't know what's coming next. We need to be prepared, but he speaks to us in the secret place. He did, he can, he will. That is our hope. That, that's the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. He's already proven himself. The fight's already been fought. The victory has already been won. So for us to be confused, that's to be expected. 
And, and in and of ourselves, we have no idea. And, and in this book of Revelation, it, it, because of the language, it's very difficult to understand unless you are thinking with the mindset of Jesus, unless you are thinking of the mindset of God. It, it's, it's just, it's really can, can be confusing, but it all boils back down to that simple point that he did, he can, and he will. You know, Tom, that's so good. And when I think about this, and I think about what does it say about the faithful witnesses? It says they overcame him mm -hmm. by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's right. And right. that they love not their lives unto the death. Now we don't like to think about that. We don't like to have that as, as our watchword that we're not gonna no. love our own lives even unto the death. But I have to tell you, there are Christians in the world today that are facing that. That's right and that they have to have that word of the te their testimony to God and the blood of the lamb. That's how we overcome the world. And this is a hard word, but you know what? It is time for us to stand for Christ in whatever situation. And Sydney, no matter what we find ourselves in, we have to be faithful witnesses. We do have to be faithful witnesses. And I think the greatest hope of them all, I know we hear like the book of Revelation and we talked about some hard, you know, hard subject, but I think it's so great that we have a way that Jesus is the way, the truth and the light. And I'm so grateful that we have a good, good God that is to even just to stop and think about it, that he gave us the Bible and he wanted to tell us that these are the things that are coming. He wanted us to know so that we would be prepared, that we can stand on his word, that we could be faithful and just give everything to Yeshua. And that gives me great hope. I don't know what it's all going to look like and y'all be honest this is a subject that's hard for me there and you know it's like whoo this is a hard thing for me to under you know understand and digest but all I know is it's like you know what Jesus I'm going to keep my face to you I'm going to stand on your word Thank if persecution you, comes it doesn't matter you know what I'm just going to say Jesus ha you can have me you know I'm going to lay myself down I'm going to surrender all and that's the greatest hope that we have Tom it's in Jesus yeah. You know, I, I just want to take this moment as we just have a few seconds left in the program. Pastor Frank shared about how to know Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior. And if you're watching and you do know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, take that simple gospel to someone that you know. It's not, it's not complicated. It is laying down ourselves, laying down our sin and saying, God, I've, I've sinned, forgive me, come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. You can take that simple gospel you can take it to your neighbor, you can take it to your family. Sometimes they'll reject it. In fact, many times people do. But no matter what the situation, you don't have, the pressure's off of you. All you have to do is be faithful to share the love of God with someone. We're so glad you joined us today. And we know that if you seek God, you're gonna find him and you're gonna find God's hope today too. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn to appreciate strange scriptures. Author and pastor Chris Palmer deciphers 52 of the most offbeat texts from the New Testament to nourish your soul and help you understand God's word in a fresh, insightful way. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.